Hello, my name is Kevin White, and I'm the designer of Tiger Creek Disc Golf Course here in South Hill, Mississippi, where I'm currently standing in the future parking lot. In 2020, we met here on the property. We came in and discussed what a disc golf course could bring to our area. We took that conversation to the board of Saltillo and the board approved us for using the land and for the financial part of putting in baskets, um, doing some land work and building concrete tee pads. So about two months ago, September of 2021, I came in and started doing the work that you see here. Reached some points where we are unable to cut and really make major progress. We have hired a mulching company to come in. And so they'll be here within the next 30 days. Uh, hopefully by the first week of December, we'll have everything cleared. I hope you enjoy this process. I've, I've looked a lot online trying to find information and I wanna put that information out there uh, for you who are thinking about building a disc golf course, who are thinking about taking that information to your city. And hopefully this is a big help to you because I, I found a very small amount of information that I felt was beneficial for me to do that. There were certainly some great articles, but I wanna show you some video and what it really takes to build a disc golf course. So, you know, we've, we play disc golf courses all the time, but there is a lot that goes into that that people really don't know. Um, and I want you to be a part of this journey. So here I am uh, about two months in and hopefully we'll have this opened up spring of 2022 uh, and definitely ready to play for the summer of 2022. What you see here is the Eastern part of the property. This is on old Saltilla Road going south to north. As we continue to travel north, you will see the yellow caution tape. We use that uh, as explained further in the videos to line the outside of the fairways uh, to show separation between the fairways. And uh, you will also notice some good clearing coming up here in just a second. We are now making our way onto Industrial Park Road. As you notice, this area is much thicker when it comes to brush. I've cut some pathways to allow access for myself as well as the mulching company to come in and see what needs to be done. A large majority of this part of the property is inaccessible due to that thickness. And so they will have to come in and clear a large portion of that before I can get in and redesign these fairways. This area is much thicker than a year ago when I first started this process. So I think it'll be interesting to see what comes about on this side. Across the street, we'll have a nice new neighborhood that's being built. So there will be a lot of uh, eyes on the course. Welcome to Tiger Creek Disc Golf hole number 13. Your tee pad will be somewhere in this area here. As you can see, based on the yellow lines, this is my exterior of the fairway, both right and left. And you will notice that there is a gap that is angled straight through that area to get to the baskets. So this particular hole has uh, probably my favorite layout because you have a straight um, shot that's through here, except for once you reach the trees that are right here, the basket for one is tucked in those trees, but the, the long basket's to the right, straight, and then back to the left, and I'll show you this. So this hole um, was pretty much how the design was laid out to be originally. I did add a second basket location. My idea is to go in and create these basket locations uh, after the fact was um, warranted by let's get the original basket in place and then we can worry about the B placement or even C placements in the end or after we get initial done. 
so you will shoot a shot that is either outside of that tree uh, that we just walked past this one here from back there either through this gap straight down or through the outside gap that we walked around to get over the trees one left or right side of this big tree here you will go directly through here and your a pin placement will be here on your left side so your a pin placement will come right around the top of that stump there that you see your long placement will be up this little elevation there's a slight elevation starting here and going up here you'll notice it when i possibly walk up the hill there and again we're just having to avoid some down trees as i cut them waiting for mulching We've now reached the plateau and you'll notice that cedar tree that's laid down here. It's on the back side of that, but I'll give you a shot back. The tee pad is back here. A pin placement will be about right there, about 220 feet from the tee pad. And then your B pin placement will be back here. And if I remember correctly, somewhere in the range of 325 to 355 feet. This will be hole 14. You can see there's a tree here on the left and a tree here on the right. Those will be a double mando uh, where you are forced to push through the center because the basket will be over in this area. Uh, so therefore, I don't want you to just be able to throw through the trees and get it near the basket. So as we walk down hole 14's fairway, you'll notice that the width uh, is rather slim here in the middle, um, somewhere between 25 to maybe 50 feet, depending on the section of the fairway that you're in. As we've reached this section, you can see that I've left a tree here in the center just to make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, the distance from the tee pad to this gap that you see there on the left and the right, uh, the double mando is about 135 feet. So I wanted to make it a little bit more challenging because one of the baskets will be uh, probably 170 or so, maybe 180. As we pass through the double mando here on the left and the right, you will notice that there is a another little gap there to hit between those two pines. One of the basket placements will be here on your left, uh, probably back towards that pine tree. One of your baskets will be about uh, right here in the on the center part of where I'm standing. And then possibly even one to the right, there's a basket for the next hole that's a pin placement that can't be hit unless you are intentionally throwing to that particular area so it's possible we may use that location for this hole as well as i mentioned before the center pin placement will be here you can see back towards the tee box there in the center. You'll have to miss, of course, the center tree that I left as well as these pines. We'll clear out these small trees as well as those that have fallen, as well as this large tree here that fell back during uh, the summer. As we walk towards the next uh, pin placement, it'll most likely be somewhere around the back side of this pine tree that you see on the right. Maybe in this area around this cedar, which will also come down. And I've even thought about creating 
an area maybe back there towards the creek or the area you will see here on the left the tee box will be back in that direction i'm actually thinking about putting a basket down uh, this particular lane after we clear it out uh, just to make it a little bit more difficult uh, the tee box and the basket would be pretty close to each other uh, so i think that kind of horse horseshoe type shape would be uh, a pretty difficult shot uh, definitely a three possibly even a four depending on the total length you're currently standing on hole 15's tee box this would be a center pin placement for a position somewhere around the 280 foot range most likely uh, have it measured it completely out because of the down trees that are currently there that need to be mulched up uh, so you can't really see the back side of this area that we're approaching here in the center where you can see it's kind of cluttered up I cut quite a few trees to create this gap uh, the A pin placement and B pin placement to the right will be fairly short compared to most holes so I needed to make it a little bit more difficult to reach. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, B pin placement will be somewhere over in this area. Uh, the previous hole that I discussed where it has that possible right hand pin placement would be this section that I'm showing you here. You can see the yellow caution tape there on the pine tree. Uh, the basket's going to be somewhere in there. The A pin placement is going to be somewhere in the middle of where we're currently looking in this this section. And then heading back towards the center of the fairway, you'll see the uh, T box area here on the center of the screen now. So you'll have to miss quite a few trees. These two here, um, maybe even that right gap this tree this tree as well as the double trees that you see there and then the little triple trees uh, that you see so it's certainly not a simple hole uh, just a you know a nice short option for your younger players as well as a technical hole for those who have to hit gaps your c pin placement is going to be your longer pin placement and will actually be one of the longer holes on the course uh, as you can see, I cut a fairly good gap. Heading back in this direction, the tee box will be back towards the right there. You have a good little landing zone area that's there to the right. Uh, you can see the dead tree in the center. The top's knocked off of it. We'll have to cut those two down. Um, once the mulching company comes in, and we'll make our way on to the C-pin placement. Also another landing zone here if you hit the correct gaps. Uh, ultimately, of course, your goal to be able to bury this hole would be to be somewhere on the other side of these two stumps and then the pins back that direction. So there's your gap to hit. Uh, not a huge gap, but certainly uh, you know an achievable one. So if you do land in this area, uh, you will have about a 75 to 125 foot up shot depending on exactly how far I go back uh, with the pin. I would say that uh, it could potentially be somewhere in the area on the other side of the stump you see here in the center of the screen, possibly even towards the back side of that yellow caution tape. Uh, there is a road back there that I showed you earlier and um, so that, that might make it a little bit more difficult because of the road being out of bounds. We have now made our way onto hole 16's fairway. Uh, we won't go back in this direction, but this is the tee box for hole 16. Uh, it'll be down the center of that gap towards the back of that uh, tree line. And then you will have to throw between uh, these pine trees here in the center. Uh, they are not mandatories, but they are, um, you know, probably your best route when it comes to getting a straight shot. Uh, it will be a rather difficult hole just because of the, of the trees uh, and their size. Uh, you do have this left gap here on the um, area that I'm walking in 
that you could reach. It would be a, a big, pretty big outside swing uh, to not hit any of the trees there you, on the right. But you can see that gap again, and then back towards the yellow caution tape, uh, you will see the pin placement there with the two pink ribbons on the tree. I think this hole will probably only have one pin placement uh, just due to the way that it is laid out uh, and its proximity to the previous fairway. If I were to put a uh, another basket placement on the left-hand side that's a little shorter, then you would kind of be throwing uh, towards that fairway and you know potentially even going into the fairway, and I just don't want the, the cross area to happen. So as you can see, we're at the basket area. Um, you will also notice that this is the fairway, so this would be back towards the left, the tee box would. So it is not a straight shot, uh, as you probably saw earlier. Uh, walking towards hole 16, I think this is a um, fun little area to walk. Of course, it'll be cleared out. But you're right beside the creek. Uh, you'll be able to hear it you know, rushing through during the summertime or the more wet months that you have but it's a pretty good separation between the two fairways with all the little saplings that'll of course get bigger as time goes on uh, you're now standing on 16's tee box uh, you will have a fairly good gap to hit there uh, as you see one tree kind of to the right and then of course those to the left uh, that may cause you some problems but your initial goal is to hit that right side gap uh, to carry down the fairway. As we make our way towards the front side of the tee box, you can see a little bit better about what kind of gap you have to hit. Uh, lots of trees on the left side, as well as your right. Uh, you will be punished if you kick off to one of those trees, uh, early trees there off the tee box. You've now made it to the right side gap. You can see that there are still some trees there in the center that you will have to miss. Uh, there were a ton of trees in this fairway in this area and I just went ahead and knocked a, a good many of those out. And you will now be looking back towards the tee box. Uh, it'll be in that area there. And you will come down to this gap what you see here on the left will be your A pin placement. Uh, it's right at 300 feet. The B pin placement will be there at 350 and the C pin placement will be there towards the back at about 400 feet. So we're actually making our way up to the back side of hole 18 uh, since we didn't walk down to the final pin placements of hole 17. So this will be hole 18. Uh, this was the initial hole that we started on. Uh, you can see there's a lot of clearing that's been done in this area. Um, to your right here, you'll see the C pin placement. Uh, that would be more of a straight shot from the T pad, uh, somewhere in that area. Uh, and then you'll have an area here to your right. That will be your B pin placement more of a left turn off the tee box. It'll be down in this gap that you see here. And then C pin placement will be down across that wood pile and to the right. Uh, it is a very long shot on any of these particular areas, but coming through this particular gap here in the middle, that'll be used to hit uh, the C pin placement you see there on the left and the B pin placement that you would have here on your right. 
and your A pin placement there. So walking back up towards the gap, uh, that would be about 280 feet off the T, possibly 300 off the T. The T pad area will be back where that car is crossing the road there uh, in that particular direction. And then the parking lot's there where my truck is at. So this will be a Mando uh, on that area here uh, in that tree and it will cause you to have to come down this particular fairway. Otherwise, they could just throw, you know, across the parking lot to hit the C-pin placement, which we don't want. Um, may actually move the Mando to that tree I just pointed at to get through this little gap, but otherwise it will be a Mando uh, to keep people from going across the parking lot to the C-pin placement. So as I said, there's your T-pad area there. Um, C pin placement there to the left. Beautiful little gap here that you're gonna be able to hit. Uh, I've thrown this quite a few times and it is a lot of fun to throw this hole. I think it's a great way to end the course and uh, will be great ways to end tournaments, especially playoff uh, situations. They will start on 18 because of that. So as you can see here, I've cut a few entry gaps to be able to come in have some visual options. Uh, this area is very overgrown on this side of the property. So it allowed myself as well as the mulching company to come in and just kind of get an idea of what we were gonna deal with. You can see very thick, very viney, um, just lots of growth that's happened over the last year. And so they'll come in on what I believe will be hole number one and uh, clear all of this out and try to give us a, a fairway as originally planned in the first design that was created last December in uh, 2020. So you can see the creek here on my left uh, that we talked about in the previous part of the videos, not extremely deep, um, but will play as out of bounds throughout the course. It runs through the entire center part of the course. There's the other side of the property where we were earlier, uh, probably around hole number 14. And here on my left, you'll see that there's some really thick stuff. And I've actually never been over in that area. Uh, it, but it will be, you know, adding length to hole number one that I had not previously planned on. So that would be a benefit. So as you can see here, I've created another entry. This is for the basket area of hole number one around the tee box area of hole number two. As you can see, it's very thick uh, as you saw on the first part of the, of the video. Um, this is looking back towards the hole number one tee pad. Uh, so that would be very cleared, uh, very nice and, and uniformed. Uh, most likely I'm gonna leave a lot of these, you know, more mature trees and clear out some of the other stuff so you can see into the course, uh, but not completely get rid of all of the, you know, trees that are in this area. I uh, still want to keep some, some of the more mature trees. So as we continue down Holt One's fairway, uh, we will be heading towards the basket and hole two's tee box, but you can see the vines have just grown and spread so quickly. Uh, last year when we came in and, and designed the uh, course, I could see the person that was helping me measure off things uh, from, you know, 150, 200, 250, 300 feet even. But now you can barely see to, you know, 50, 75 feet. Uh, you can see the pink ribbons there on that tree that would be uh, two trees that will be kept for hole two C box uh, the bigger tree there you see and then the basket will be down most likely in uh, this area so uh, just lots of growth that's happened over the last you know 12 months and I really look forward to seeing what this this part of the property looks like after all this is gone I think one thing that I want to show you 
you know, with all these vines. I know it's kind of repetitive, but I want you to realize that you can build a course no matter how bad it looks. Um, this area, you know, looks really rough. It would take forever to try to cut everything up with a chainsaw or try to pull the vines out by hand. So, you know, the mulching company is going to help drastically. But, you know, this area is nobody would ever come in off the street and go, wow, this could be a disc golf course. So you really need to, you know, be patient, have some, you know, some ideas. And, you know, if, if your city cannot fund a mulching project, then, you know, raising some money by selling uh, tee pad sponsors, et cetera, uh, would be a big plus in uh, the building of your course. But, you know, clearing this stuff out, being able to see from one end to the other, is going to make a massive difference on this side of the course. So don't give up on, you know, your dreams when you walk in a property and you see something like this. So here you'll see a third entry point that I created. Uh, this will be somewhere between probably hole three and hole four. Uh, you can see the flag there on the ground uh, that originally was hole four's tee box design. Not sure that it will stay that way, but you know, that'll give you an idea of kind of what I was, you know, doing previously is going in, putting the flags in, trying to get a a distance idea, a visual idea, but now, of course, the the overgrowth has changed that. Uh, I've actually never been to this part of the property on the other side of what you see there in front of me, so I'm not really sure what all area is there, what, you know, what size area is there, but I believe just by looking from the other side of the property, uh, which would be the back side of this, you can probably add at least one more hole. Uh, going into my fourth and final entry point, this is going to carry you to uh, basically the right side of where we just were, as you can see out there towards the actual part where they play baseball and soccer. So to my left would be the uh, previous entry point. As you can see, I actually got through this area. It's not nearly as thick. I came in and cut quite a few trees and created an initial gap, uh, whether I use it for, you know, the hole from where I was basically coming in for the entry, maybe a little further back, but it's back in that direction. And, um, you know, you can just kind of see that there's much less of, um, you know, all the brush, whereas you look back this way and you can see there's a lot of, you know, small trees. I'm not sure if the tee pad's gonna be on the left there or if you're gonna come through this tunnel uh, and then curve back around to where I was standing previously in the in the first part of that video. So to the left of this fairway is going to be at least four, maybe five holes um, that right now I, I can get to, but it's a little bit more difficult. But it'll be back in this area that you see me scanning across, um, and I'll show you that once you know we get to the the mulching part. But, uh, you know, fun area to play over there. Uh, it's just kind of grown up a little bit, uh, just like you saw in the previous part. And so I, I'm just not going to go over there and, and film today. Hey, guys, thanks for uh, joining in, uh, watching the videos and uh, checking out the before parts of Tiger Creek Disc Golf Course. This Friday and Saturday, December 3rd and 4th, we'll have the mulching company coming in and uh, you'll see a vast difference in the way the property looks. So I look forward to sharing that with you. I'll probably upload that sometime within the next couple weeks. But uh, thanks for following along in, in the journey of building Tiger Creek Disc Golf Course in South Tula, Mississippi. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to hit me up, and I'll be glad to answer anything uh, that you have questions about.